Well, if you've ever read the book by Stephen Covey, you'll recognize that I've stolen his book title for the title of my sermon. The, the book is called First Things First. And so, in the book, Stephen Covey says that you take a bucket, any bucket will do, and in the bucket you begin to pour in rocks. So some of the rocks are going to be large rocks, some of the rocks might be smaller rocks, some of them might even be pebbles, some could, could even be sand. And so you're going to fill your bucket with rocks. And then, after you have filled the bucket, you're going to take water. Now, I wanted to bring water this morning so that I could make my demonstration very lifelike. And Cindy said, no. <laughs> and I always do what Cindy says. Have you noticed that? Okay, I, I better not say that. In the I, I, usually want, I usually want to do what Cindy said. That's, better. That's how I'm going to say it. So I didn't bring water, but you're going to use your imagination. And we're going to fill our bucket with rocks. And then we're going to fill the bucket with water until it's all the way up to the top. Got the picture? Full of rocks and water. Then, then comes the big rock. Did you notice this on the altar this morning? The big rock. I went out into my front yard. And you know, you don't have trouble finding rocks in El Paso. <laughs> If you want to try this at home, you've got lots of materials to work with. And so I found the biggest rock at 6201 Via Aventura, the biggest rock I could lift. And I brought it with me this morning because, again, I want to, I want to illustrate first things first. What's going to happen if I dump this big rock into my bucket of rocks and water? What's going to happen? Yeah, so... So it's not going to happen this morning because I didn't add water. But if it, if it had been filled with water and rocks, when I dump in the big rock, we're going to have a mess. Everything is going to overflow. Now, you might be asking yourself, what, what in the world does this have to do with the scripture that was read? What does this have to do with me? I want to tell you, Stephen Covey says, when it comes to the big rock, if it's going to fit, it has to go in when? First. If the big rock is going to fit, it has to go in first. You say, I still don't understand what you're saying. Well, think of your life as that bucket. Your life is a bucket. We have bucket lists, don't we? So, so your life is the bucket, and every rock that you place in your bucket is something that is important to you. Now, all of us fill our lives with things that we think are important, don't we? If you stay up at night and watch Jimmy Fallon, you do that because that's important to you. Now, in the grand scheme of things, it's not the most important thing in your life, but whatever you do, you do for a reason. It's important to you for some reason. It's a rock, and you put it in your bucket. Some of them are small. Some of them are medium size. Some of them are larger. Your friends, your family, they're the larger rocks. You place them in your life. The car that you drive, it's important to you. It's a rock in your bucket. The place where you work, the place where you play, where you have fun, where you spend your time, everything in our life is a rock from small to large. But I'm here to tell you this morning that there is this largest rock, the one that I can barely bend over and pick up. This is the rock that represents God and his kingdom. That is the big rock. And Covey says, if God is going to fit into our lives, God has to come first. That's what the scripture said this morning. Did you hear when Maggie read, seek first God's kingdom? Another of the translations says it this way. Make God's kingdom your primary concern. I want to ask you this morning, is God and his kingdom the main thing 
in your life? Is it the big rock in your life? Or are you like many of us? Have you allowed all of the other rocks in life? And we're not talking about bad things here. We're talking about things that are important, but not as important. Have you, like I tend to do, allowed so many good things clutter your life that suddenly there is no longer room for the big rock? Could it even be possible to let enough church stuff, good church activities, enough of them accumulate to the point where suddenly where's the space for God? I want to ask you this morning, is there room in your life for the main thing? Somebody has said the trick in life is keeping the main thing as the main thing. So I want to ask you, how's it going for you? Are you keeping the main thing as your main thing? Or has life cluttered away the space and left no place for God? Somebody has said, God cannot be an afterthought. God is the main thing. He cannot be an afterthought in your life. He cannot occupy the space that you offer when nothing else is left. God, if he's going to have his rightful place in our life, God has to be first. I say that to you humbly, knowing how hard that is to live. To keep God as the main thing, the primary concern in our lives. Did you notice how this passage started? The very first words from Jesus were, don't worry. Did you notice that? Don't worry, Jesus says, about what you will eat and drink and wear. Jesus is not saying these things are unimportant. God knows we need to eat. Some of us are going to go do that in about 10 minutes. We need to drink. There's no life without eating and drinking and wearing. I hope all of us will continue wearing, wearing our clothes. These are not unimportant matters. These are essentials. And God is not saying they're not important. God is just saying they're not everything. Don't worry because your father already knows what you need. Don't worry. Somebody has said worrying is like trying to get to your destination in a rocking chair. You're rocking back and forth furiously and you're, you're giving it everything you've got, all kinds of energy expended and you've gotten nowhere. That's worry. Worry is trying to move in a rocking chair. And God is saying, not that it's a sin to worry. God is saying, it's just no use to worry. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't do you any good. In fact, it probably harms you. Worrying is the opposite of trusting. And Jesus invites us in this passage to stop worrying and to start trusting. Giving God first place and letting all the other things that we need be provided. And I am the first to say that is easier to say than it is to live. My mom, she'll be listening to this by video a little bit later. I hope I have her permission to say this. My mom has earned a doctoral degree in worrying. <laughs> Advanced studies in worrying, right? She would say, it's that I'm so concerned. It's her way of showing her love, and I believe that. Some of us, because of our personality types, have a harder time trusting Instead of worrying. But Jesus is showing us his kingdom. Where we can because we know that God is dependable and faithful. And he will provide because we know this is true. We can make God first in our lives. We can let him have his rightful place as the primary concern in our lives. We can seek him and his kingdom first. Knowing that our loving, dependable, faithful Heavenly Father will provide everything else that we need. Everything else will sort itself out like the other smaller rocks in the bucket. If we will put the big rock first. Easier to say 
than it is to live. So what would it look like in your life if you made God and his kingdom first? I'll tell you what it looked like in the life of Vano Kiboko. We met his sister two annual conferences ago. She spoke to our annual conference. She is an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church from the Democratic Republic of, Con of Congo. She was the very first woman ever ordained as, as an elder in her Episcopal area. And so she came to our conference and spoke to us, and she told us about her brother, Vano, who was not an ordained elder. He was a congressman in the Congo, and he was criticizing the government publicly, and it wound him up in jail. He was sentenced to a three-year term in Congo, in jail, for publicly criticizing the government. One of the watch groups said it was trumped up charges. And so there he is, sitting in jail, three-year sentence. I'm asking you, what would you do? How would you, how would you be approaching life if you were sitting in a jail in Congo for something you said? There he was, Vino, not a, not a trained clergy, that was probably in his advantage, not, not a polished preacher, he's just there in jail, he decides he's gonna put God's kingdom first. And so Vino begins to preach to his fellow prisoners. I would think that would be the hardest place to preach in the world, in a prison. But, but Vino began to share his faith in Christ and 700 of his fellow prisoners came to faith in Christ because Vano decided, if I'm in prison, then this is my mission. I'm gonna put the kingdom of God first. I'm gonna make the main thing the main thing. So he shared his faith, 700 of his fellow prisoners came to faith in Christ. And so he said, they need to be baptized. So the bishop came in. Sometimes the bishop gets it right. And in this case, the bishop got it right, and he appointed Vino as a lay evangelist with the authority to baptize. And Vino baptized 300 prisoners over a, over a series of months. Now, I'm going to have to work really hard to baptize 300 people in El Paso. In fact, it's going to be hard for me to baptize 300 in my whole career as a minister. But Vino got this done in a few months. Finally, the prison moved him to a military installation where he no longer would be evangelizing. Thanks to advocacy and prayer. Finally, in May of this year, Vino was released from prison in the Congo where he served 16 months of his three-year term. I want to suggest to you this morning that Vino is an example of putting the big rock first. Are we going to baptize 300 people in the next 16 months? Why not? If we are putting first things first, then God will be the one who determines that. All of us are invited together to examine our hearts and lives. Me too. To examine my heart and life. And on a daily basis, ask myself this question. Is God in his rightful place? Is the big rock first in my heart and life? Would you join me in that challenge this week? Would you allow God, the Lord of all, to lead you into seeking his kingdom first. May it be so.